Roger, you can get started. Yeah, hi, Tim. Um, first of all, the team news, what's the story with Andros Townsend? Is he definitely back? He's in the squad, yeah. God, this is loud today. Or was that me? Yeah, he's in the squad, so he's, uh, we're hoping that yeah, he'd, he'd, be, he'd, be, he'd be in the round selection. How's he been looking? Has he been training? He played an under-21 game. Yeah, he's, he's done enough training now for us to be confident that he can be, he can be dropped back in the squad. Yeah, he's looked um, magnificent. Has he been missed? Well, the results um, don't suggest that he has, but I think whenever you've got a player like Andros, you know, he's capable of of um, turning a game in an instant, you know, so it's it's great to have him back, yeah, and we're, we're pleased to welcome him back to the squad, but as I say, the rest of the, the rest of the team has done very well over over the recent period. And Musa Dembele? Musa will be back, yeah, he's fit. Um, just longer term, I mean, Eric Lamella hasn't featured so much, I know he had a thigh injury at one stage, is he still injured or is he just not making the pass at the moment? No, he's injured. Yeah, he's had a he's had a thigh injury and he's got a niggle on his back and we're still assessing him, along with um, Chir- Vlad Chiricus and uh, Sandro. So they're the three who, who are not available for the weekend. And with Lamella, how long would you say you're assessing? Any idea of how long that might be? Uh, we t- they, they just they keep monitoring the situation and uh, I keep asking them for an update and they keep telling me that you know we we'll just have to investigate a little bit further. But um, we're well, hopefully we're making progress. I mean, I'm, I couldn't put a time on it. Kabul's, Kabul's ready. Kabul's fit. Um, this game against Everton, I know Richard and Bailey have been tuning in from the, the website. He suggested it's perhaps the most important of the season so far. I mean, are you looking at it that way, given the position of the season? Yes. Yeah, it's important because it's the next one, and it, and it's a team who's in and around us for for that fourth spot. You know, I I, I think possibly the the um, the amount. The team who finishes fourth would be the one who takes the most points off of the, in, the teams in and around them, and, and that includes Everton. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very important. And um, I'm glad that the players think it's as important as I do because they'll be reminded that it is a crucial game and it could be a, a springboard for us to, to go on a nice run again. How are you doing this, this battle for fourth spot? Are you looking at it as a team, <coughs> yourselves, Liverpool, Everton, and Manchester United? Or yeah, Newcastle. I think Newcastle will be in it if they got a, if they get a favourable result this weekend. We play them midweek. If they were to beat us, then you know it's they're, they're still in it. You know it's open for for any team to put a run together. You know there there is teams up in the round that that spot who can who can put a nice run together and and elevate themselves right up there. I think the top three are away and um, and possibly away too far for anyone to catch. That's going to be the next thing. Actually, do you think it is just simply that one spot that is up for grabs now? Yeah, I mean, you always strive to get as high as you possibly can, but I think it might be a bridge too far because the teams, the three teams we're talking about seem to be away and playing very, very well and don't look like they're going to drop any points. But you never know. Liverpool have that position at the moment in the fourth spot. Do you mm. make them favourites? To get they're they're favourites because they're in that spot at the moment, but we, we've still got to go to Anfield and it'll be a crucial game. Um, just um, We just need to make sure that we're in that position between now and... Uh, and when we do travel up there, that we're in, we're in with a fighting chance, and I fully expect us to be that. Um, just something, that, something else I read on the website was an interview with um, Tony Park talking about Hugo Lloris, and he described him in his view as being the best keeper in the Premier League. Would, would you share that sentiment? I think he has to be up there around. We we we're delighted to have him at the club, and and um, and we think he's a he's a fantastic goalkeeper. Yeah, I, I would I would echo that. Yeah. He just needs to um, difficulties. I'm sure Gary knows what he's going into. It's never. It's not an easy job. I didn't think it was an easy job, and, I, and I'm not, not been disappointed with that. It's it's tough, you know. You have to. It occupies a lot of your mind, and um, you have to have firm beliefs in what you want to do and get that message across to the players. All you can do is give a hundred percent, you know, and and hopefully that takes you and the team and the football club where you need to be. Um, their objectives, obviously, in is to stay in the league and get as high up as they can. But um, I wish him well and I wish um, Michael well in, in the future as well. Is it difficult for someone in the position you find yourself in and that Gary finds himself in to make that step in terms of the relationship with the other players and, and, and being their boss? And, and, you know, is it in your head? Like, do they see me as the boss? Or do they see me as 
Well, slightly different because my obviously Gary's played with these guys. I, I, haven't, I haven't been fortunate enough to be young enough to play for, with these fellas, but so but I have been on the other side, and, I, and I'm sure if you ask the players, they know that I'm I'm the boss. One more thing from me: just, um, West Ham are still pursuing the Andy Carroll situation, um, and they're persuading the FA to look again, even though they've already mm. had an appeal. Would that set a dangerous precedent, do you think, or, or can you understand the club doing everything it can to make sure its players? Are I think it makes it clear that, that Andy Carroll is vitally important to, to West Ham's future and, and they don't want to lose him for this period of time. But um, I think you have to take every every incident in isolation and uh, they feel aggrieved that it hasn't been overturned, overturned. We made an appeal with Danny Rose. We got, we got that one overturned and I think that was unanimous. One thing I would say is on not just that incident, but... Many what we're seeing recently, the feigning of, of injury from players is, is not something we want to keep out of the game because um, retrospectively I would go back and punish the, the player who's diving around more than I would the player who's causing the offence. So you would actually legislate for players who are deemed to be play acting up action? And I think that's the only way you're ever going to cut it out, you know, is to, is to go back and, and, um, and give them a higher punishment, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I, I think the decision's been made by by the governing bodies, and and unfortunately, they just got to take that on the chin now. And last year, Everton two two. What do you remember about that game? Not an awful lot. <laughs> it was a good game. What, how do you think Roberto Martinez has done? Recently? He's done very well. I mean, he's been a good manager for a period of time now at, at Wigan. It was a fantastic period, um, and he's gone there, and and it's been. A, a fantastic start. He's changed the way Everton play. Um, they look to be a little bit more adventurous. But we'd have to say that David Moyes done an excellent job at Everton over the period of time he was there. It's, it's obviously a great football club and um, and they found a man who's taken it in a direction where it, where it right, so rightly needs to be at the um, top half of the division. And this battle for fourth, you spoke about Arsenal go to Liverpool tomorrow. Are you hoping they do your favour? <laughs> Tough one. Great question. <laughs> we um, obviously, you know, we no one likes to see Arsenal win from when we're wearing these colours. But um, it would be nice if they done us a favour tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Um, not not for this one, possibly for the ones after. You're right, you know, it's, it's going to be a time when when um, some boys are going to need to be rested. That That's the beauty of having a, a large squad. Um, it's just the art is picking picking the right ones to um, to juggle around. You know, you don't want to do it in six or seven, you know, but I think one or three or four maybe possibly could be right to, um, to uh, juggle it. But um, we're assessed... At every, Every game as it comes, the next one is Everton. We're assessed the boys after that, see if anyone needs a breather and um, and the team will be selected in Newcastle accordingly. Well, we haven't lost to the team in around us. Man United we beat. It's good. I mean, it's, it's 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 attractive to watch, you know. And, it, and you can, we know by playing that type of football, you can occasionally leave yourself open to what we saw uh, in the, in the derby up there at Anfield, you know. So, but I, you've got me started on this formation one again. It's all about individual players, unfortunately, you know. Or fortunately, but I'm just going to tell you that um, individual errors count for the goals you know if you look at them goals what they conceded against Everton there's nothing to do with them being wide open it was to do with personal errors by players and uh, and unfortunately they couldn't turn it around against a very good Liverpool side but I've seen Everton do that to a lot of teams this season also so um, we're hoping we just catch them on a bad day
Um, it's, all, it's all been a challenge, yeah. It's not, nothing to really surprise me. I knew pretty much what I was going into. I knew it wasn't going to be easy, um, and it certainly isn't. And one thing is for certain that it's all about winning. You know, when you win, everything's good, and when you don't, everything's wrong. Tim, I just wanted to ask, how important is it to, to start getting to make quite a lot of follies and obviously the last result wasn't ideal, but making three to top follies in a week to make quite a lot of way yeah, you're right, and, and the results haven't been great from the start of the season up to now. There, um, funny enough, I mean, in a very bad result against Man City, I thought the fans were magnificent. You know, really stuck with us, and um, and and we just hoped we could have made that a special evening. Unfortunately, it didn't work for us. But it, it's vitally important that you win your home games. I mean, our, our away record has been excellent. But um, it is, is important. If you're going to be top four, you've got to, be play, you've got to play very, very well and get the results both home and away. Uh, Leicester's another that's something you know well. There's been a newspaper interview today mm. uh, saying that he'd, he'd love a chance to sort of come and work at Tottenham. He thinks he could help get hands up even better. Would you welcome him on, on board? Is that something you could I think I, I read it. Someone showed me it. Someone who's a good lad, David, isn't he? And um, I'm not... You know, at the moment I'm just concentrating on doing my job. Yeah, I don't. I'm not the one who hires and fires people at this football club. You know, I can make suggestions where someone might help us. But um, yeah, Andros has got a bit to learn, but he's not doing bad already, is he? So, you know, I'll um, maybe have a chat with David and see what he recommends we could do to help him out. Yeah, it's another one who, who, who's unfortunately out at the moment. He's got a calf calf problem and we're, we're hoping to get him back as quick as we can.